Nature gives us a lot of examples of complex behavior emerging from the interaction of many individuals. The members of an ant colony are capable of a wide variety of complex behaviors. Finding and transporting food. Constructing elaborate underground complexes of tunnels and chambers. Defending their territory from invaders. Such activity would seem to involve a great deal of planning, memory, and coordination. But there's no head ant that draws up the blueprints of a colony and gives directions to the worker ants. Turn that tunnel to the left. Bring that piece of sand over here. Instead, each ant follows a very simple set of rules based on cues from its environment and from activity of ants nearby. For example, how do ants know to walk in a single file to pick up food and then return in a single file to the nest? They don't. They know three simple rules. First, if you come upon something that smells like food, pick it up. Second, when you pick up a piece of food, release a chemical signal, a pheromone. Third, if you come across a pheromone trail left by another ant, follow it. Let's see what happens when a group of ants follow these three simple rules. The first ant wanders about in its environment and picks up a piece of food. She releases a chemical signal and begins to leave a trail. As the ant continues to wander, other ants stumble upon her trail. They follow this trail and are led to the food. Some of them may follow the trail the wrong way, but that's okay. Once the first ant reaches the nest, she drops off the morsel of food. And when she exits the nest again, she will come upon her own pheromone trail and follow it. The ant doesn't remember where the food is. She doesn't even know that she's following her own trail. She's just following rule number three. Always follow the trail. Meanwhile, more and more ants have come upon the original trail and followed it to the food. As they follow the first ant's path back, they strengthen and refine the chemical trail. Soon, the ants will appear to march in single file to the food and back. There's no plan, no memory where the food is, no need for leader to point the way. Three simple rules, a few environmental clues are all that is needed to orchestrate this remarkable, efficient process. Well, I certainly recognize that the ants and the food is a great example of complex behavior arising from a few simple rules. But don't we need to ask how those rules got so ingrained in the ants that they follow them? That's a good question, but one that I believe most good biologists could answer with ease. Why don't we meet later, Kevin, and I will show you how good a biologist I can be. It's a date, but only if you'll stop being a redhead. It makes me nervous. I will pick you up at 7.03, if that's okay. 7.03? Never mind. Can we get back to our story, please? Jeeves, this next section should be of particular interest to you. If nothing else, it emphasizes how unique you and a few of your fellows are in comparison to the general state of cybernetics. From dog stars to dog and paw stars, we are now embarking on the age of robots. The enormous complexity of living things has been brought sharply into focus by our efforts to create machines that mimic organic living creatures. We now have robots that help in many fields. Bomb disposal, fire and rescue operations, hospital care, military drones and tanks. Our desire to build robots seems boundless. 
Indeed, robot building competitions are held annually at many high schools and colleges across the country. We now have robots that can fly planes. Can you guess which plane is being piloted by a robot? On the other hand, the robots that explore other planets can certainly perform feats that no human should attempt. From laser eye surgery to automobile construction, we have been quite successful in building robots that can perform remarkably well in situations that can be defined by simple rules and repetitious tasks. Similar to the way ants can perform tasks following simple rules, pull robots clean by moving around in random patterns that eventually cover the entire pool bottom. The tail sweeps back and forth to raise bottom debris while the water vacuum sucks the dirt into the container bag or net. And occasionally it backs up to avoid getting caught in corners. Vacuum cleaner robots perform their duties by very similar algorithms. The efforts to equip robots with cameras for eyes and other parts to mimic living creatures have met with considerably less success. Only very recently has there been real progress in creating androids. Robots shaped like humans that can exhibit a wide range of our muscular and motor functionality. But we are still at the starting line when it comes to creating machines that can mimic human thought. It is easy to imagine an ant or a robot as a mindless agent following simple rules that produce the illusion of complexity. But what of a human mind? Surely everything that humans do, from designing skyscrapers, to composing symphonies, is not the product of a few simple behaviors. And yet it might be. Because everything that humans do, or think, or feel, is a result of these basic units of brain structure, the neurons. The human brain contains more than 100 billion neurons. Just like a single ant could never build an anthill, a single neuron can't think or feel or remember. A neuron's power is a result of its connections to other neurons. Each neuron is connected to as many as a thousand of its neighbors. These trillions of connections provide the playing field upon which the complex activity of the brain takes place. Each neuron can turn its neighbors on or off depending on the signal it sends. And the resulting stable patterns of neuron firing represents memories and images and thoughts. We don't yet understand the relationship between neural activity and mental experience. We don't know what the precise pattern of memory or an image or a thought looks like. We don't yet know how to read the cerebral code of the neurons. But by looking at the behavior of other complex systems from anthills to computer simulations, we may yet learn some techniques that allow us to work our way up from the activities of a few neurons to see the structure that emerges from the whole. <laughs>